Okay, welcome back to the Roma Press Podcast. We hope you are doing well. Roma pull one out of their absolute backsides so far up into their into their inner cavity. They had to dig far, the furthest probably uh, that was meant for human to go into your own canals of the body, but they've managed to do it with a goal that Diego Llorente, if you just had to pick 1-11 to 11 on the pitch for Roma at that moment as to who would not only score the goal, but score Llorente, that. Llorente, Llorente or your newborn, right? Like <laughs> that's the, the odds of that happening are more or less the same. I mean, everything about the goal was perfect. The, the hit. Poetic. Poetic, that I mean, Matt, just the technicality. I, as somebody relatively tall, I uh, already know. I like, already know. No, I already know it's gonna be one of those goals that we'll, you know, we'll use as part of like, you know, when we do those. Yeah. Ah, remember, <laughs> like you do with the with the Bohan goal, right? Ah, yeah. I <laughs> and I'm like, I John, thought, shut up! It's been twelve years. You know. Um, what do you or the goal, I mean, the one I always like to pull out uh, out of the memory hole is um, Florenzi Boyan. against Barcelona. The Boyan was against Fiorentina, no? It was, it okay. was. Um, I mean, we could find a bunch, but nonetheless, uh, Roma, they pull one out uh, at the death to earn a draw. Before we get into that, a thank you to our newest patron over at Patreon. We're going with, uh, going with the nickname. Uh, the Moroccan Romanista. So thank you for your support. And of course, to all of uh, our other patrons who make this possible. It was ab- an absolute roller coaster ride in the group chat. At, uh, one moment it was, oh, De Rossi, what the hell is he doing? To the next, oh my God, Diego Llorente. He should be starting over Gianluca Mancini from now on. Uh, if you would like to join the chaos, if you uh, if you want the exact opposite of whatever a, ther- a, a, a therapy session is, you can go to patreon.com slash Roma Press, and then at IS Roma Press for all of the uh, social media stuff, YouTube, all of uh, all of the Twitter articles, everything from the website you can find on social media. Again, at IS Roma Press. Well, where do we want to start with this one beyond... I, I, th- I have DAZN playing in the background behind you. I, I, they are showing this thing on loop. I, I just it's, it's a rocket. His placement is perfect. Everything about it is perfect. Um, let's get the bad out of the way. Um, because in my post-match reaction podcast for the Patriots, the first thing I said was, I, I, I think us as supporters, uh, people in the media, even some of the hyperbole we see and we write about all the time, um, I think we flew a bit too close to the sun tonight. That's okay. It happens sometimes. Um, that first half was, was it the worst of the era of Daniele De Rossi? It was one of the worst two to three. I think it probably has like, well, probably, I mean, here it's probably what, like the one against Salernitana where, but that there, was bad. The, the, the difference was that Hoisen exactly pulled something out of his backside and, and gave yeah. you a lead tonight. Instead, you perform badly, more or less in that same vein, and you get punished for it by one of the biggest losers in this league. This guy gets uh, on my nerves. He's become, for me, kind of like like La Padula or Saponara, yes. you know, those oh. annoying non-entities that are just, like, drifting in Serie A, and you have no idea what kind of player he is. Like, Luca Ranieri. Who is this guy? Why is he yes. so annoying? Why was he already annoying back in December when we faced them? And God, like if the 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 only the, even for me the 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 main reason that Diego Llorente's goal is so phenomenal and doesn't make me want to kill myself the idea of dropping two points because at the end of it that's also what you did you dropped two points you gained one yes. you're 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 very much in the race for Champions League but. The fact that Diego Llorente completely erased that Ranieri goal, because if that guy had made the difference tonight, I mean, that would have been, for me, it would have been one of the lowest points as a Roma fan to see that guy celebrate, holding up his ears. 
So yeah, th that that's celebration, man. Um, I I don't even know where to put it, just in terms of the absurdity level. It's like uh, calm down, um, relax. It just it's one of those things where you. It's not even that Roma are losing at the moment. It is the person scoring it. The person who scores it sometimes hurts worse than uh, you know going down by the score in the score line. It's brutal. You know what it reminded me of, and obviously just a, a tad different. Um, I like his game, but as a person, I, I think if there was like one person who I could RKO in. Sad, yeah, it would probably be him. Uh, Domenico Berardi, do you remember when he scored that absolute rocket against Roma and he like snapped their uh, winning streak in 2013? Uh, I believe it was a one to one draw, if I'm not Back mistaken. Yeah, Domenico Berardi was considered one of the biggest stars, yeah, rising stars, and uh, that didn't turn out, yeah. It, Thank God, he, Luca Ranieri. Oh. Is not considered a star because this guy is a complete non-entity and he's getting on my nerves. Yes. Anyway, I don't want to talk about him. It's a, just it was for, for me that was the low point of the match, allowing this guy to score on you. That's to me that was shameful. Uh, but I think it, all of this starts with Thursday's game. You know, because yes, it plays a factor. We against, yeah, we play against Brighton. We play excellent, easily one of the best performances that Roma put in in years. Uh, one of the more mm. convincing performance, one of the most dominant performances that we've seen from Roma. So tonight was always going to be different. Now, Fiorentina yes. just also played on Thursday, fine. But I think with Roma and with, with the traveling today, they traveled today right before the match, it was always going to be complicated. So questions can be made regarding De Rossi's selection, whether he should have not rested some players, whether he should have attacked early on, you know. Um, but these are considerations that are easy to make right now because for De Rossi, mm. for the team, Thursday's game is just as important as this one. Like, in terms Correct. of the threat level, in, in terms of the threat level, you do not want to let Brighton see the light of day. So that's... They, right. they went into this match with two days of preparation with the mentality of, on Thursday, we cannot allow Brighton back into the game. How do we tackle tonight? I completely agree. You could, for me, my mindset of tonight was very simple. It was you cannot go into that second leg, particularly after Brighton had won on uh, they had won earlier today. You cannot go into that with a defeat. You could not. I, a draw, obviously, I would not feel good about, but certainly a defeat. OK, you cannot go into it. And you and I have said this before. Um, yes, even though tonight was a draw, um, I, I think the manner in which you achieved that draw can have a different face or a different feeling to it than had, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Llorente uh, uh, got the header in the, you know, the, the 60, uh, 68th minute or something like that. I, I, I just think the manner in which you pulled it out the point tonight, I think that can propel you into the next match. Uh, for me, it was all about avoiding a loss. You could not go into that with a defeat. I think you and I both expected tonight to be difficult. Uh, Fiorentina is one of those teams where you just do not know what you are going to get from them. Much like Roma, but very much in the sense of they do it this in, this thing of inconsistency. They do it at such a more... They are consistently inconsistent, and they do so at such a higher temperature level versus Roma. I it just... You could have told me tonight if Roma would win 5-0, they would lose 3-0. I would have been able to believe you either way. Um, but you cannot go into that second leg with Brighton having lost. And on top of that, this was another one of those weekends, okay? Everybody in this race for uh, uh, top four had an important match. You came into tonight knowing what? You came into tonight knowing uh, Atalanta dropped points. Bologna had lost to Inter. So this was not one that you could lose to. Obviously, Fiorentina is a good team, uh, or at least if we want to speak about it from a, a math standpoint, they are 
I, I suppose technically, if we want to say, in the race for top four. Um, so if we want to look at this from a head-to-head perspective, then it is, I suppose, a good result. But you mentioned, well, you know, is tonight a point gained or two points dropped? Uh, obviously, technically, it, I mean, obviously it is both. But what is your mindset going into this? Because uh, for me, it was a point gained because I look at all of the other moments this season in which Roma had had uh, opportunities to do something in the table, to gain ground, to get closer. And they, it, it seems like they completely fumbled it on every conceivable chance that they had. Um, and tonight, it seemed like it was destined to be one of those things until Diego Llorente pulls one out from his backside. So uh, to me, I am going to look at this as a point gained versus two points lost. Where do you come out on it? Well, I mean, it's it has to be it has to be two points gained. It always has to be away from home. Uh, wait, hold Florence. on. What two points gained or one? Lo- wait, two Sorry, points it, lost. Well, yeah, two or points one point lost. Gained, you are saying. One point gained, exactly. Um, well, it, it always has come. It has to come down to that in this moment when you're trying because what Rome are trying to do, they're trying to stay competitive. Mm. They're trying to stay competitive. The only thing you cannot do is lose. Right now, yes. that's the mentality. You cannot, you cannot lose. You cannot come away with zero points because that will set you miles away from everybody else. Regardless of who is on top of you in the league, you have to, at the end of the day, you have to come away with at least one point. That's the when De Rossi was appointed, the expectation could never have been, well, you have to win every game for the rest of the season. Mm, It correct. was never going to be that. I, I I dare anyone to say, oh, well, when he was appointed, that's what I thought. That's what I expected <laughs> from the team. No. You, 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 we all expected Roma to just please hold on. Please don't get humiliated. Please keep it together. They've exceeded that expectation. Tonight was sort of, hey, back to earth we go. This is, yes. you know, it's inevitable. It it happens. There's fatigue involved. There's less time because, you know, you, you have more time you, you to prepare for Brighton. You know how to prepare for Brighton. Two days to prepare for Fiorentina. Again, a team that can either be the Barcelona of 2008, 2009, or, uh, uh, you know, Catanzaro. Um, there is no in between with Vincenzo Italiano. Uh, so tonight was all about keeping your hopes alive. With that goal, Roma keep their hopes alive. There is a lot of yes. questionable decision making that went into this match. Obviously, uh, De Rossi makes a bold decision to to pull the Mancini. thing with Mancini. Oof. That's a bold decision. It's interesting, but I think that's his way of saying, I admit I made the mistake with the starting formation. This is not working. And it's fine. That's That should have been your expectation for a coach who will have success, but also will struggle. And tonight, yes. he struggled. He was trying to put the pieces together. He was having a hard time doing it. But you come away with one point in that manner. And that in of itself has to be a huge boost for you. Um, And besides that, you know, obviously Ranieri scores, but thank God, thank God Belotti didn't score because this man, he was so good though tonight, man. I don't, I don't don't think I recall (laughs) a single performance that he he gave for Roma that resembled the kind of performance he gave tonight for Fiorentina. And this guy is going to be back in Trigoria in a few months after (laughs) after, after playing like Kylian Mbappé, you know? I mean, this guy was uh, possessed. This guy resembled... Could you imagine Kylian if they don't make Champions League by like a point or two? And it, you, know, you can point to this and it's, match. And, and it's so. Rossi. And it's, I'm and back. It's Rossi and Belotti. And they sort of confront <laughs> each other. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, so thank God He at was least incredible that. though, man. We have to admit it. We, 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 we can't hide the fact. I mean, he, he, he was your best player tonight, yeah? No, yeah. I mean, that's that's... He was a difference maker, which cannot be said about his entire Roma spell. Not once was he... <laughs> it it is amazing. I mean, listen, it uh, Borghino was always going to be on the table with him. It, it inevitable. He was so good tonight, though. I, he was so 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 good. But you are correct. I mean, the fact he didn't get that goal, 
is sort of a saving grace. Uh, if we want to shift, I suppose, now to more of the the positives, Svilar, man, I, I, I just, what is there to say beyond maybe this should have been done sooner? I, I don't know. I, I just, to have your... To have your expectations in a match for, uh, for the goalkeeper, okay? I just want balance. That's all I want. I, I, you know, I am not looking for Alisson, okay? I, I know in my mind that is never going to happen again. I am looking for steady. I can, I can live with mistakes. And you know what? As long as you make up for those mistakes by, you know, pulling out the, uh, the important save or two, I'm fine with that. I can live with mistakes. Um, that is actually like the defining summary of uh, Wojciech Szczesny in his first season with Roma, yeah? Errors uh, and mistakes galore, but then some of the saves the guy made were incredible. Um, with Rui Patricio for these first six months, it, it was it, it reached a level of parity almost where, f- forget not making mistakes, like this, this guy, I, I, I'm having what seems to be a stroke on a bi-weekly basis because you don't know if the guy is even going to have his brains about him in a match. To see Svilar now, man, making not only good decisions and decisive saves, he looks like he has matured by seven to nine years in the span of four, of like four to six weeks. He looks so self-assured. And I... I want to go back to this point because it was one of the first things I, I mentioned when he was named the new first choice goalkeeper. Going into the summer now, not potentially having to worry about that role, I, I don't, I, I don't think people can appreciate how how enormous that is, how huge that is. What, a, especially for a team with these limited financial means. To be able to potentially save yourself from spending money on the transfer market and for, for one particular role and being able and to put that towards something not, else, huge. yeah, and not a small amount of money because I mean, no, it no, for, especially in Italy, will cost you a minimum of 20 million, 25 million. Yes, most of the names that are keep being mentioned. So, and I think the the whole thing that uh. That, that now, you know, the, the fact how he quickly imposed himself as the starting goalkeeper. Yes. Diego Llorente just went on and said, you know, with a goalkeeper like him, we can do great things. Now, that's not a great vote of confidence for Rui Patricio. Like, yeah, that's, I was about to say. <laughs> you know, that's a, like a very nice thing to say about Zviar, but that's a terrible thing. <laughs> If the, if your center back, so a guy that has been working with you for over a year and a half, <laughs> goes out and says to the main uh, television channel that, uh, yeah. you know, this is the guy who who actually does his job. It's like in it's it's like in the in the in the Departed by Martin Scorsese. Remember when that guy asks Mark Wahlberg, "Hey, who the fuck are you?" Right. I'm the guy. I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. Yeah, that's right, that's right. that's me right. as we are. You know, <laughs> that's me as we are. <laughs> so um, he does his job, and 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 I think that's all we always wanted, and we always pointed that out, especially when when uh, we had those flashes of semi acceptable performances, even from someone like Paul Lopez. Remember, we clang on to <laughs> Paul Lopez. It was the brief spell where he was <laughs> good. He was acceptable, and we're like. That's all we needed, you know. That's because really it comes down to that. We all we need is security and occasionally a goalkeeper who makes a difference. Tonight, just like against Brighton, and just like in previous games, Svr has been steady like a rock. He's been steady yes. like a rock. Clearly, a guy who's been working through a lot of uh, frustration of not getting playing time you know, working harder on himself, but hence now he's ready. He feels ready. He plays ready. Like this is not some kind of, you know, it's not Golini who at Napoli came in and played the second choice because Mere <laughs> was injured, was unacceptable. And it always felt like he just doesn't belong there. Zviar belongs in the lineup. This is not a choice yes. that was made because Rui Patricio was crap. This was a choice made because Miles Zviar was good. Yeah, and the thing I like too about him is there is not one 
glaring hole in his game. Like you just mentioned, Paulo Lopez. I mean, beyond being able to be good with the ball at his feet, the guy, I mean, if we want to go back to that Darby performance, I mean, knocking the ball into his own goal. I, I mean, beyond being able to play with the ball at his feet, I, I, he was, you want to talk about the non-entity, that, that's what's Paulo Lopez. Um, there is not one part of his game that has a very glaring flaw, in my opinion. Now, uh, he, he's not exceptional in, in all of these areas, and, and by no means are we saying that, but I mean, I think he embodies the steadiness that we are seeking. I mean, again, yeah, you, you don't nobody need is much. expecting him. Yeah, no, I, 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 Roma, you don't need much. That's the whole damn thing about this season, about previous season. We, we, we it almost feels like we, we were looking for some kind of you know magnificent team that has all the answers no all we wanted is the simple things we keep we keep saying that about pellegrini we keep saying that about even de rossi why does de rossi tonight struggle a little bit because he he makes a lot of confusing choices now there are some that make sense like awar at some point in time Hussein awar has to play whether his performance can be salvaged by that goal i don't know but Clearly, De Rossi today was trying to make life a bit more complicated for himself. He was trying to do too many things at the same time. And that applies to a lot of things that Roma have seen in recent yes. months. Zviar is one of these things. Zviar is the embodiment of a goalkeeper who does his job. And that's all Roma needed. They didn't need a phenomenon. They don't need somebody like Alisson who happens to, to come by once every hundred years. They needed a guy that is not shaky, a guy that will not let a ball slide through his fingers, a guy that, okay, he can make a mistake or two, but the positives far outweigh the negatives, especially in this moment. Because in this moment, you, you know, I, I can even, even, even the penalty for Fiorentina. Now, Fiorentina, I don't even want to look at their penalty record, but clearly no. you were not going to go up against the team that was, you know, secure of itself. So tonight, the penalty he saves is great. Perhaps not formidable because of Fiorentina's moment and the mental gymnastics that those Fiorentina players must now do in order to score a penalty right. in the first place. <laughs> right. But right. it's enough. It's enough to keep you alive. That's all you want as Roma is to have somebody to keep you alive. The bare minimum that then, if the if the rest of the team does its job, then the bare minimum becomes a, a huge plus for you. Well, and on top of that, too, listen, it should be expected that that Rossi is going to come in here and try to change some things. I mean, you you said with Awar, you wanted to see how he implemented him uh, upon his arrival. I thought tonight uh, obviously should have cleared <laughs> should have cleared the ball on the goal on the second goal of Fiorentina, uh, but I thought that I, I mean that was a sublime. Finished by him with his head, in my opinion. Uh, do they equal each other out? I don't know. But I think he at least showed or, or proved to some level that he can at least be somebody you can go to without feeling some overwhelming sense of dread that you are going to see a dramatic drop off in level. You, it should be expected, though, that De Rossi tries things like that. You are not. We shouldn't expect him or even want him to do the exact same thing that Jose Mourinho did. No, but, um, but it, it was never going to happen again, John. We 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 don't have a, a coach who came in to to deliver three points each and every game. That was never going to be the case. That was never the expectation. I think no, people no, no. And, and, and no. But what I mean to say is, games like these are good. You can't yes. really go. Oh, on. absolutely. You know, you, you, know, you can't go on thinking, oh, well, this is, you know, we figured this team out. No, this team is is again is is working in a completely different manner, and it's it's only natural for them to have these ups and downs. Well, and to be at this point too, it, you, it is already a luxury because again, as you just said, no nobody expected De Rossi to come in here and to win every match. Uh, but also nobody expected this. If you had, okay. Daniele De Rossi through uh, uh, 11 matches at Roma and you show to them up to date what he has done to the uh, to his first 11 matches 
you would have taken that and snatched it from the person's hand offering it. So to even be here at this point is a luxury. So, so to, to be in this position where we are with him and to be complaining about uh, this and that, about some of the things he does uh, against Fiorentina, I, I just... We have to have some sense of balance here. Now, yes, obviously, we, we take things one match at a time, and we are going to react to the uh, the things as they happen in the moment. But when you look at it from uh, when you get to the entire picture, which I think you have to do with it also, you can't take this thing uh, because, again, we have this discussion about is he going to go, is he going to stay? It seems like every single day there's a new interview from some some footballer giving their opinion as to why uh, uh, Dan Freakin should have already handed to Daniele De Rossi a 25-years contract. Um, we have to take this in the bigger picture. We can't take this from match to match as to whether or not we like the guy or as to whether or not he is doing a good job. Um, this, is, this is something that requires calm and balance. That's why I look at tonight as a point gained because I, I mean, look at some of the things that went wrong today. I, I know this may sound like some uh, me trying to play like 4D chess in some way in my head, but for them to enter halftime only down one two zero, th- that in and of itself, in my opinion, al- uh, almost seems like a skill or something gained. I, the fact that they should have been losing two, maybe even three to zero, in my opinion, going into halftime. That that first half was uh, abysmal in every sense of the word, and to only be down by one. I, I mean, in a way, I, I I mean there there are teams who are good at doing that, who are li- who are good at limiting, um, uh, limiting the opponent and being able to find the back of the net. Uh, I, I suppose obviously luck has something to do with that, but you've had renowned for that. My goodness, um, so. I think no, we have it's, to it's staying alive. That's it. That's the motto. It's staying alive. You know, it's, yes. it's not dropping. It's it's not delivering a zero point performance. You can have these bad nights as long as you get the, at least that one point against, obviously, an acceptable opponent. In this case, a direct rival for a Champions League spot. Yes. That and away from home. That's acceptable. That's acceptable with this team, with the considerations that have to be made with this coach. We cannot use the same parameters as we would have used for the team that we saw, say, four or five months of ago. Of course not. Um, the situation is completely different. The, this week's week of weekend of fixtures entailed uh, different possibilities for tonight's outcome. And again, it always comes down to also the fashion with which this outcome is delivered. Because... Tonight, hey, you score that equalizer maybe in the 60th minute. Right. And then and then what? And then you have this feeling that maybe you, you haven't done enough. Whereas tonight, you score at the, at the death. And it's like, we're in it. Like, even on a bad night, we're still there. Right. I, I mean, to show that you played like crap, you know you played like crap. I mean, we have De Rossi in the post-match saying that first half was shit. Everybody knows it, but you are still able to get the result. Um, again, those are like the, the victories where I say where you, you show clear deficiencies and signs for growth, but you get a victory. I mean, a, a match like today, it's not all that bad because, again, you showed that no, even on a very bad night where there is fatigue, where, uh, you know, you, you at least I... I find it hard to believe that they don't weren't at least partially looking forward to Thursday and still kind of reliving off of the high from the previous Thursday uh, to get the result okay in Firenze uh, it, it's not it's not nothing and again to be i don't know me, uh, because I, I i saw there were there was a lot of criticism towards De Rossi uh, going on during the match in the group chat and i i I suppose I just wanted to call for balance because, I, I mean, for us to even be in this position right now that we are in, where Roma, I mean, as miserable as you have may, be, may have been during that game, Roma improved their Champions League position, okay? Uh, four top four at the end three of this points, round. They, they improved three it. Three points of top four, yeah. Three points of top four. Yes. So uh, to be here right now in this position it's, with Terossi, it is already a luxury. Uh, a- nobody expected this. Nobody ever could have predicted it go this well, so I, I think we need to. Uh, we have to keep that in mind. I, I like he has already exceeded expectations, so so you have to work from that premise. 
Uh, With Thursday in mind, though, I said earlier in the episode that they they could not go into this with the with the defeat they didn't um i i mean we would be stupid to come on here and to say oh my gosh well uh, i don't know anything can happen in football listen i don't know if they are going to win but they 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 should not should not should not surrender a four goals lead, but again, I mean, and also the, the people who call, ah, well, the turnover should happen on Thursday. No, it should not. Like, oh, you know, come like on. as much as <laughs> in the sense that I, I totally get because I'm, I'm also for the sentiment of obviously I'm a romantic. I want Roma back in the Champions League. I think focusing on the league right now can help you. Whereas Europa hmm. League, we know what we're in for. Okay, but still. It's all about morale. It's all about momentum. The way Roma yes. conquered that first leg against Brighton was just stupendous. It all comes from the fact that you won against Feyenoord in the fashion that you won. It just, I don't know, that game, the, the way you won it, penalties, something about it just kind of made the whole team click. All of a sudden, the team yes. seemed like they were, for the first time in this Europa League campaign, it, se- it felt like the team was alive. Like the team was actually responding to the competition, to the stage. Going into Thursday, being like, "Hey, you know what? Let's throw out Baldanzi out there and Huizen and everybody." And right. just you couldn't be casual that. about it. Come on, that's scary. That's scary. That's inviting for trouble. So either way, you're always going to be inviting for trouble at this point, at this stage, given every single thing that's happened before and that could happen in the coming weeks. Every match is. Is, is a trap. Every match is. That's why the expectations was never for De Rossi to always absolutely get it right. Um, tonight is a natural episode within a coach's young career. Okay? He tried to repropose the three, three, um, three-man three defense without Chris Smalling because Chris Smalling was out. He, he, he played around a bit with the substitutions. He he, cha- he made that bold decision to, to take off uh, Mancini after 30 minutes. Did it pay off to some extent? Yes, but he also, I mean, it, it paid off also in lessons learned. And 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 this is what we get. This is we get a Roma that can actually say they've learned a lesson. De Rossi now just said, I I I think I think this team is rejecting the idea of playing with a three-man back line. Okay, there you go. So at least you have you have to have some some idea of what to do in uh in the near future, and you have perhaps a clearer uh, vision of what this team needs going forward in order to to reach the objectives that they must absolutely reach this year, um, which is obviously Champions League football. Oh, my goodness. See, I made the mistake of going back onto Twitter. You say one thing good about De Rossi, and it somehow becomes an indictment on Jose Mourinho. This is Now I remember why I stayed off this uh, nightmare of a platform. Uh, you make one decent tweet in favor of De Rossi, and apparently it is uh, it is uh, something against Jose Mourinho, which again, even if you don't mention the name of Mourinho, it somehow gets uh, it gets transformed into this uh, argument against him. Galaxy brain stuff. We will be back after Thursday. I'm going to leave it on that note because uh, if I read any further for any additional replies from some of these people, I'm going to lose uh, uh, further faith in humanity. We'll be back after the second leg uh, later in the week. So until then, ciao.